Now for the top story. Let's bring in two generals to analyze whether President Obama is doing the job as commander in chief. Joining us from Washington, Major General Paul Eaton, retired, who spent 30 years in the Army. And also in D.C., General Jack Keane, former Vice Chief of Staff of the Army under Presidents Clinton and Bush. General Keane, your assessment of the present commander in chief. Well, first of all, we're talking about leadership here. And when I think of the, the commander in chief's leadership, I would characterize it as being uneven and inconsistent. Why? Because at times he's strong and decisive, at other times he's, he's weak and indecisive. He's strong and decisive, clearly, in stepping up the war against al-Qaeda. Clearly strong and decisive in escalating the war in Afghanistan over the objections of people in his own party and others in the White House. Changed the strategy fundamentally to a counterinsurgency strategy. Inconsistent there, though, because at the same time, announces a withdrawal before that operation actually begins, undermines our allies, encourages our opponents, and makes the war more difficult to prosecute. Iran, for liberty, fighting for the oppressed is a matter of policy. One million plus are on the streets in July 2009. We don't hear a word out of the commander-in-chief in support of those oppressed, and that's our number one strategic opponent in the region. Now, Egypt. there was a reason for that, though. I mean, he didn't want to exacerbate the situation in Afghanistan and in Iraq, because, as you know, Iran, if they felt that the United States was trying to undermine, actively undermine them, would, uh, could cause a lot of trouble in the two theaters of war, and uh, the president didn't want that. So I just, I just want to throw that in, because there was a reason that he did what he did. Now, I don't know if it's for right or wrong reason. Let's go to you, uh, General Eaton. So uh, General Keene basically says, look, the world's getting mixed messages here, and so is the United States of America. Is this guy up to the job? He clearly doesn't like the military action. He clearly doesn't want to get involved uh, around the world. I think that's obvious. What say you? Well, Bill, first, uh, thanks for having me on tonight. And it's great to be on with uh, General Keene, uh, who is certainly a uh, very decisive leader. Uh, the military leadership has never been a popularity contest, and the other part of that survey said that he was cautious and deliberative. We expect the president to be uh, very decisive when a vital national interest is at stake, when the country is at great risk in a vital national interest stake. Uh, we haven't seen much of that uh, in the last couple of years. What we've seen are national interests. Uh, we like to see a president, soldiers like to see a president, uh, go after military action with, uh, with some deliberation and make sure he gets it right. So, yeah, but I mean, I, I'm going to challenge you here because, as, as General Keene said, Iran is the biggest problem that the United States has in the world today. There was an opportunity, and John McCain was going crazy, as you'll remember, for the United States to basically get on board with those who want to overthrow the mullahs in Ahmadinejad. President Obama sat it out. Now, I just gave a reason why it might be legit, but that sent a message to not only Iran, but the rest of the world that, you know what, he's not a tough guy. He's not Ronald Reagan. Reagan wouldn't have sat that one out, General Eaton. Well, Bill, Iran is an important country. It's a local hegemon. It's a local power we created after uh, we attacked Iraq and took down his number one enemy. So we're in the containment drill with, uh, with Iran. True vital national interests are nations that can kill us, like Russia. China, uh, I would say my, Mexico is a vital national interest. So the strong action that we have taken to establish rapprochement with Russia, I think, is decisive. All right, uh, but uh, I disagree with you. I think Iran, with the nuclear situation, it becomes a, a, a United States' biggest threat through a lot of proxy terrorism and everything else. Now, General Keene, uh, around the world, do you believe Putin, uh, as uh, General Eaton just referred to Russia, and the Chinese leaders fear Barack Obama? No, I think there's a growing perception that the United States has a weak president. And, and clearly some of his actions in, in Libya just recently have, have magnified that with the indecisiveness, should we go, should we not go? And then after making the policy statement that Gaddafi should go as a matter of U.S. policy and then putting in play a military operation that is so limited, it denies us the capacity to destroy his military, which would lead to his removal. And I think they look at that and they see weakness and indecisiveness. And, and listen, Bill and, 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 and Paul, I feel strongly 
the world is a more dangerous place when people perceive American leadership is not strong and, it, and is not decisive. Listen, All we right, are a country General, of exception. Uh, I'm going to let General Eden have the last word. Go, General. Uh, Bill, the, the, the real bottom line here is that uh, we have a president uh, who may uh, be confronted with, uh, with the ultimate challenge. Jack Kennedy was viewed as a weak president by, uh, by Khrushchev. And uh, you're right, it, uh, it pushed us to the brink. Uh, never right. underestimate the president of the United States. We have elected right. a very good man. And uh, I have his General, I, I got to run, but I appreciate both points of view. Good debate. Thank you very much.